So just recently, Battlestate Games nerfed some of the most popular and some of the best ways to grind your strength level to Elite and Escape from Tarkov. But my favorite method, the one I've been using for the past few wipes, is still in the game, and it might be the new best way to level strength and escape from Tarkov. So let's talk about it. Before we dive into the video, I just want to let you guys know that I do stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, you should definitely check out our Discord. We have over 10,000 members now looking for group channels, Sherpa systems. It's an awesome place to be. That link is down below as well. But today we're talking about strength. Strength is one of the most coveted uh, skills to get elite in Escape from Tarkov. It provides a ton of benefits that we are going to talk about in a minute because most of you probably already know that. But what we're talking about is how to level that strength skill and what methods have been nerfed and what are the best methods now. I'm going to swap the camera over here so you can see it's all dependent on this little weight symbol in the bottom. You can increase your strength skill by throwing grenades and also meleeing other enemies, scavs or PMCs. But grenades are really expensive to like make any meaningful change to your strength skill using. Uh, and I, you just I never really melee anything ever. So. The other way to do it is by traveling distance over weight, walking or running. It doesn't matter if you're walking or running. It's about how much distance you travel while overweight. So now there's three different kind of color codes here in the bottom corner. Green means you're underweight. Yellow means you are overweight. And red means you are really, really overweight. Uh, and you basically can't do anything. It's really hard to just move. Uh, the yellow is where you want to be. Depending on your strength skill is when this number will switch over to yellow. We all start at the same threshold at level one, but then as you level it up, it changes. Um, but the most important thing to know is that as soon as this ticks over to yellow, even if it's by 0.1 kilogram or only one kilogram, as soon as it ticks over to yellow, you are leveling strength by walking and running around. It does not need to be higher. You do not level more strength the higher it is. As soon as it takes over to yellow, you are leveling strength. So the best way to level strength that people have found is to go into your raids overweight. Make sure that you've got enough gear on you that as soon as you load into the raid, you're overweight. And as soon as you start walking around, you're leveling strength. So even if you die early in the raid, you are still getting as much strength skill as you can. The most common ways people were doing that is they were taking something like docs cases and they were filling them with SAS drives, uh, SSDs, diaries, manuals, stuff like that, that were had some weight to it. You know, if you double click on any item, it'll tell you how much it weighs. Uh, the diaries and the SAS drives and the SSDs, you could put, you know, 16 of them in here. Boom, you'd put that in your secure container and you would be you would weigh an additional 16 or 20 kilograms. And that would be a great way to do that. Well, recently, BSG nerfed the weight. They reduced how much those things weigh. So now you have to take even more of them in raid, which is going to take up more slots in your secure container um, and means you have to pay for more of them. It was nice because you never lost those things. You never lost those SAS drives because they just remain in your secure container forever. But the huge downfalls to that was, A, it took up secure container space, especially if you only have something like an alpha, and B, as you picked up loot in raid, you would now get crazy heavy because if you're going into the raid overweight with like 30 or 40 kilograms and then you killed a bunch of people and you wanted to get out with their loot, you couldn't ditch those SAS drives because then you wouldn't get them back or you would be risking a lot of money. So you would end up crazy overweight in order to get any amount of loot out. So we are going to talk about which it, my favorite way and the most meme way and in my opinion, the best way to level strength. And it is right here, the almighty and glorious coal pack. So this is it. This is how I did it. Uh, I just go here, filter by item. We're checking the coal packs there. Uh, you can buy them from the trader for 8,000 rubles. If there's any extra, you can buy them. Uh, the coal packs weigh 1.9 kilograms. And then the, um, the face shields weigh another kilo. So you can grab a couple face shields, throw them on your coal packs and go into the raid. Now, this is a meme, but the reason why this works is because this is our three, uh, three kilos basically per helmet and face shield. So three, six, nine, 12, you can go in with an additional 12. Uh, if you have wear a really light kit, you go in with another one. But here is why I like these for like three main reasons. One of them is just a meme. The other two are really good. One, you, what's nice about this method is that you can go in just overweight and as you get loot from players or scavs or scav boss or anything, you can ditch the coal packs one at a time. 
uh, and keep yourself as close to the threshold of just crossing over being overweight as possible, because that is going to maximize how quick you can move and how much stamina you have. Uh, while still gaining those strength points. So the fact that you can kind of customize this and take in only as much as you need to be overweight, and then as you're getting loot, ditch as many as you need to stay as close to the threshold is a huge reason why this method works really, really well. Uh, the second reason is because you can insure these things for only 3000 rubles per helmet, and you will get all of them back. After maybe an entire day of doing this, where you go into every raid, you might buy 20 or 30 coal packs and insure them. All of these methods cost money, by the way, so this is gonna cost money. You are gonna get every single one of these coal packs back because nobody is taking them. There is no profit potential for anybody to waste four cells taking a coal pack. Nobody's gonna wear it, nobody's gonna ditch their helmet for it, and nobody's gonna take it out when there's other things. I mean, bolts and nuts and screws and all sorts of stuff that you can, one slot items are worth more than these nobody is taking these out. So then once your initial investment is in there, you basically just get to rotate these in and out. You go in your insurance, you grab two or three, you insure them again for 3000 rubles a piece, and it just keeps coming back. And you can do this all the way up until you get elite strength. The third and final Mimi reason, if you want to be inducted into the way of the coal pack is that when you kill a PMC, what you do to disrespect them for generations to come is you remove their helmet, whether you intend on taking it or not, and you place a coal pack on them and you turn on the visor and you leave their body that way to shame them for generations. Now, there have been a few other ways that people recommend doing it, and I still like the coal pack way the best. One of the other ways is empty fuel cans. Empty fuel cans are really heavy, almost nine kilos for an empty fuel can. That is really nice. But we go back to the same thing. If you bring two of these now, because they're so heavy, when you you might be have acquired some extra loot, you want to ditch one of these because you're really heavy. But if you ditch one now, you're underweight again because the fuel is so heavy. Um, this is still definitely a great method because a lot of times we have a lot of these extra empty fuel cans and the, the blue ones might be better for this because they're probably lighter. The other thing, though, is you can insure these, but it's ensuring the value based on if it's full. So it's 12,000 rubles to ensure one of these. Um, so this is definitely still a good method, but I prefer the cold packs. And finally, what I have done in the past is you can take buckshot. So what's nice about buckshot is that this is incredibly cheap. It's 30 uh, rubles per round from Jaeger level one. This is just the seven millimeter buckshot. And it's one kilo for each stack of ammo. Uh, this provides uh, one of the main benefits of the coal packs and even better, which is even more granular, like customizability of how much you want to weigh. As you get loot throughout the raid, you just start ditching these one at a time and you are literally ditching one kilo at a time. So you can really make sure that you stay right at uh, the threshold if you want it. Uh, the downside is it depends on what your strength is. You can't ensure ammunition, so you're not going to be able to ensure these rounds. So if you're trying to grind it up from level, you know, five or 10 strength and you've got 40 levels to go over time, I think you'd spend less money on the coal packs because you only need to buy 10 or 20 and they just start coming back over and over and over again. Whereas you need to buy quite a few buckshot rounds over and over and over and over and over again. Um, but this is definitely still a very valid way to do it, especially because uh, the rounds are so cheap and because there's no limit on how many you can buy. You can just keep buying them and he's always going to have these in stock. So those are the three methods that are still kind of, I would say the best. The cold pack is the way, cold pack your enemies. I wanna see this out there. I should also toss out that I didn't come up with this idea. I'm actually not sure where it came from. I got it from my friend, Sealable Bag. I think he got it from Finest XI, who got it from JDream. I'm not sure, but shout out to whoever invented the cold pack method because I love it. Now the question is why, if you don't, uh, if you're new to Tarkov or if you've never really gotten into the skill system and the elite skills, we can briefly go over this. Um, Strength is going to increase as you go, as it levels up, it's going to increase your jump height, your carrying weight, your melee strike power, uh, the movement speed while you're sprinting. It's gonna increase the throw distance of your nades and reduce the amount of stamina drained by ADSing. So every time you gain a level, these are gonna move forward a little bit. Some of these are really, really nice, like increasing the carry weight means that like when I was up at, you know, 40 or 45 strength, I could carry 36 kilos and still be underweight. Um, while you're trying to level it, that just means you have to carry more stuff. But 
uh, it, it does help if you're not trying to be overweight. And then a lot of the stamina related things are really nice as well. Now, what people really kind of struggle with, and I definitely agree that this might be a little too overpowered, is the elite perks. Uh, one of the elite perks is that you're a 50% chance for your melee to do a critical strike. Once again, that's not really anything. The other one is weapons, body armor, and chest rigs are now weightless. Now, this is actually not true. This is kind of weird and kind of bugged out. But basically, it's it. some of it's true, but some of it doesn't work exactly like you would think. Basically, the way it works is anything on the left side of this line, anything on your person does not weigh anything anymore when you're elite and anything on the right does. The, the actual flavor text of the skill says that uh, your chest rig shouldn't weigh anything. Um, but as you can see, even if we take out all the stuff here, if I take this off, I go down to 5.6. And if I put this on, I go up to 7.4. Uh, and that same thing happens with armored rigs. If you wear an armored rig, you, it does affect the weight. Uh, it's weird. I don't know why that's bugged, but that's the way it is. However, uh, as you can see, anything on the left of this weighs nothing. You can see even just putting my kill armor in my backpack, I my weight goes up uh, because this doesn't weigh anything when I put it on. So your helmet doesn't weigh anything. Your contacts don't weigh anything. Your uh, face covers don't weigh anything and your guns don't weigh anything. And by guns, it would mean your gun, a gun you picked up off a PMC, a pistol you picked up off a PMC, and your melee weapon as well. Nothing on the left side of this line, nothing on your character weighs anything. Yeah, that's pretty kind of broken <laughs> because then you can kind of, uh, especially with the carry weight additions, like you can walk out of a raid with insane loot and still be underweight, like really underweight. You don't really need mules or anything anymore. Um, it, it's, it's kind of crazy. It basically negates the weight system entirely, but it's very understandable that this is a very sought after skill. And I just wanted to make a video that quickly ran down some of the best ways to do it. And in my opinion, the absolute best way to level strength and escape from Tarkov. I hope this helped. I hope this kind of showed you a little bit about the skill, how to level it, especially since they nerfed some of the most common ways. And I hope to see you guys out there cold packing your dead enemies in escape from Tarkov. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. If you liked the video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord server is an awesome place to be. That link is down below as well. Thank you again for stopping by, and I will definitely see y'all on the next one.